back at 836 now with our Sleep Better Today series. We're helping you kick off Sleep Awareness Week. And while there are a lot of facts out there about getting a good night's sleep, there's also, as you probably know, a lot of fiction as well. So here to help us sort fact from fiction, Dr. Rebecca Robbins. She is from Harvard Medical School, Brigham and Women's Hospital. Dr. Robbins, good morning to you. Thanks good so morning. much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, I mean, you know, we had daylight saving over the weekend. I have two small children. Wife is traveling for work. Uh, I'm a little sleepy myself this morning. They kept you honest, probably. Yeah, so yo, you as early. they always do. <laughs> what about this, this, this first idea that if you sleep an extra hour on Sunday, that's going to help your body readjust. Is that fact or fiction? This is our first myth because just sleeping in for an hour, first of all, not many of us are able to do that because we have young kids. But if you were able to get that one extra hour by sleeping in, you might feel a little bit groggy because our sleep is governed in part by our internal biological clock or our circadian rhythm. And that system doesn't change on a dime. So that one hour makes a big difference. We have some data to show that this week there's more what's called cyber loafing. Mm -hmm. So people show up at, at the office at work, but under Form, they're surfing the web, they're doing things other than work. So a lot of us are struggling. Two tips for all the viewers out there, if that is you. Number one, get outside. Even on this on a gray day like today, yeah. natural sunlight is one of the best ways to help us get energy and power through the day and make any sleep loss up with naps in the naps. afternoon. I'm a firm believer in a good nap, too. Let's talk about myth number two here. And I've read this before, that if you turn down the brightness on that, that cell phone that you probably keep on your nightstand or maybe your, your iPad, if you turn the brightness down on that, that's helpful. Is that true? Our screens are emitting blue light, and that has a strong kind of cue, sends a strong cue to our internal rhythm that we're trying to become awake exactly when we're trying to power down close to bedtime. So if you just move the brightness down, it's just lowering the amount of blue light. So what you want to do is look into night shift mode or sleep mode, wow. uh, depending what type of phone you have, if you have to be on your cell phone before bedtime, because that will avoid the blue and make the colors warmer, like reds or yellow. Oh. Or better yet, maybe opt for something a little bit more relaxing. Okay. Okay. I've been known to occasionally have a, a glass of bourbon before bed, maybe a glass of wine at dinner sometimes with my wife. What, what, is, what is that doing for my sleep? One glass, one dose, maybe not too much of a problem, but much more than that. Alcohol will put you to sleep. It, yeah. does, it is a sedative, but it unfortunately, it will ruin the quality of your sleep. It causes you to wake up multiple times and suppress some of the most important stages of sleep. What about this idea that if you fall asleep fast, that means that you're a good sleeper? Is, is that a myth? This is another one. Oh. It actually takes the well-rested person about 15 or 20 minutes to fall asleep. So falling asleep is really part of the process, and you want to set yourself up for success doing relaxing things before bedtime, all of that good stuff to increase your, your chances of falling asleep quickly. All right, and now we've got some, some news to announce because you've actually put together, as I understand it, um, a seven-day sleep cha challenge, a sleep journal. What is this sleep journal that you speak of? So this is exciting and has been a lot of fun to work with the team on. Sleep tracking is becoming increasingly more, more common. A lot of people are using devices, but here's the good news. The old school paper and pencil work really well okay. too. So this is a journal we've put together for all of the viewers. And basically we ask you to just be more mindful about the times that you're falling asleep, how long it takes you to fall asleep, and then what you did over the course of the day. So you can consider yourself a little mini experiment and maybe try to make Make small changes to your sleep and notice how you feel in, uh, in the daytime and, and how you feel after waking up. And so for seven days, folks jot this information down and this is going to help them get a, a better night's sleep? That's the idea. Just by being more aware of your sleep, where we can draw more attention to it and hopefully um, also take a look on the, the website. We've put together a set of uh, behavioral challenges, one for, for each day this week to work on. All right. And by the way, folks, if you look on your screen right now at the bottom, there's a QR code. Take out the phone, scan that QR code to learn a little bit more. You can also sign up for our Start Today uh, newsletter sleep challenge by doing that. Or you could do, do it the old-fashioned way. Go to our website, just today.com. And we're going to have even more sleep advice coming up in our third hour and tomorrow we'll continue sleep awareness week by tackling some hacks that are wildly popular on social media right now and an expert's going to actually tell us if those hacks work hey thanks for watching don't miss the today show every weekday at 11 a.m eastern 8 pacific on our streaming channel today all day to watch head to today.com all day or click the link right here